7 verse 31 before I get started I want to let the leaders know uh, we will have a quick meeting right after service leaders we will have a quick meeting right after service amen that will give you time to go get your chicken wings amen y'all know the Lord knew what he was doing when he made a chicken praise God if you're ready stand on your feet Genesis chapter 11 verse we're just going to read one verse together well we're going to read one verse and I'm reading out of the NIV Genesis chapter 11 verse 31 If you're ready, see, I'm ready. I'm ready. We, have, we began to do a series in the beginning of this uh, month. And we, this is number five, part number five of faith in action. Somebody say faith in action. Yes. And actually, as I begin to study the word of God about faith in action, actually, I can teach this series the rest of the year. And because anything that we do for God, we have to do it by faith. Somebody said by faith. by faith. Amen. Amen. So we're going to have a little bit of class participation. So I need you to give me a little bit of feedback. And I need you to sound like you're a little bit excited about the word of God. And if you sound excited, then that means that I can cut this one short. Praise God. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But, but uh, I, just, I just want you to get involved in the message because this has been such a wonderful message about faith in action and we have already uh, learned about when we have faith in action that we sometimes will have to wait wait a while until God bring to pass what we need. Amen? Amen. Uh, it's not that God is getting ready. Uh, God has to get ready. God is already ready. But God has to wait till you get ready for where he is about to take you. Amen? Look at somebody and tell them God is about to take you somewhere. Oh, oh, oh. So when we begin to talk about that, we begin to talk about while you're waiting on God, that doubt will try to infiltrate your mind. And you must understand, you cannot stop the doubt from coming into your mind, but you don't have to obey the doubt that comes in your mind. Y'all ain't saying that to me up in here. So it's not that it's not going to come. You just got, you cannot respond when doubt comes into your mind. Amen. Somebody shout, no weapon. Amen. No weapon formed against you. See, he said it's going to form, but you don't have to, you don't have to obey when it's formed at you. You don't have to submit to it. You have to know that God has your best interest in mind. Amen. And so, and so on last week, we began to talk on last week, and we talked about Naaman, how Naaman needed something from God, and he had, he had to get a word from a little small young girl, a slave that would have a word from God, and I, and I want you not to get intimidated sometimes when young people have a word for you. I need you to know that even young people got a word for you, and oh, young people, I need you to understand that older, older people, our elders have a word for us too. So we have to find love on a two-way street. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me up in here. So, so in order for us to show love for one another, we have to learn how to receive from one another. Amen? Amen. Amen. Before I get started, I want to thank all our prayer warriors and inter intercessors for this week for covering us in prayer for the last two weeks. So let's go to Genesis chapter 30, chapter 11, verse 31. And it says, Torah took his son. Torah took his son Abram. His grandson Lot, son of Haran, Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, the wife of his son Abraham, and together they sent they set out from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. Briefly for a moment, I would like to speak to you, continuing the series on faith in action, but now I want you to understand the subtopic on today, faith in action, and I want you to understand faith that won't settle. Faith, come on somebody, that won't settle. Father God, bless this word, God, hide me behind the cross that you may be glorified in this place. Give us 
deeper revelation to speak to each and every one of us individually how well we need to not settle for where we are God but expect that you are bringing us to an expected end bless your word oh God in Jesus name we pray somebody shout amen amen amen, amen. I, I need you you may be seated in the presence of God this morning God I, I want to I want to teach you on this morning uh, faith in action but faith that won't sell Oftentimes, when we begin to talk about Abram, we talk about Abram as the father, which his name was changed to Abraham. Abraham was the father and he is the father of faith. It wasn't that Abraham done everything right, but one thing about it, Abraham believed God. Please help me preach on today and tell your neighbor, you must believe God. Oh, but I hate to bust your bubble. The Bible says even Satan and his imps believe, but they, they don't obey the word of God. I must say, reiterate to you every week, I reiterate to you that God is not just speaking so he can just, you can just hear his voice. God is speaking so you can obey his voice. Come on, somebody. Somebody, please tell your neighbor, you got to obey. Uh, there, is a, there is a quote I'd like to tell you by Nelson Mandela. He said, there is no passion to be found playing small. It's settling for a life that is less than the one you are capable of living. See, you understand, some of us, some of us, we aim too low. When God wants us to aim higher. Amen? Amen. God, some of us are aiming too low, but God wants you to aim higher. You, it's more to you than what you think you can do. Oftentimes, I have to learn how to encourage myself because the God is showing me that uh, there is some seasons in your life that you, your best friend may not have the word for you. <laughs> there is some seasons in your life that your husband and your wife may not have a word for you. And when somebody don't have a word for you, you got to have a word for yourself. Oh, God. Look at somebody say, don't settle, don't settle. Don't See, you must understand, we always talk about Abram getting ready to move and, and God coming to Abraham and to Abram and telling him he's going to go to a place that I will show you. See, you must understand, walking by faith uh, is it, it, that you are walking by faith, but you don't really know exactly where God is going to take you. You just know he just said, all he said to Abram was, I will show you. So what in other words, that means you're going to have to walk, walk every day and believe God that my steps have been ordered by God. See, most of the time we want, we want to stay in one place and we are afraid to go the extra mile. Maybe you're afraid to ask for that promotion. Maybe you're afraid to try to uh, learn another language. Maybe you're afraid to try something new. But God's saying, if you be willing and obedient, he said, you shall eat of the good of the land. Come on, somebody. God is wanting to pull more out of us than where we are right now. Come on, y'all. Uh, uh, God has challenged me to go back to school. And at this moment, I, I'm not back in right now, but I'm going back. And why he was challenging me is that I was given every excuse why I couldn't make an A. Because <laughs> everybody in the class was younger than I was. You understand? But I had to learn how to listen to the young folks because they got some ways of, of, of maneuvering now that they can get the aid that I was desiring. Amen. We could have Google nothing to help us write an essay when I was in school. You understand? We didn't have to tough it out. But now God has made it where you have technology that you can get an increase before you get increased. Come on, somebody. You, you don't have no excuse why you don't read the Bible or study the Bible. to Haran 
and he got comfortable. When he got to Iran, he could, he stayed there for years and didn't go anywhere else. And he was supposed to go to Canaan, but he got stuck in Haran. So, so and, and, and what had happened was, not only was he stuck there, but the entire family was stuck because he wouldn't give up and move out of his comfort zone. Yeah, man. Oh, see, I'm telling somebody today, you're going to have to move out of your comfort zone to get to the next level where God wants to take you. That's all right. I brought my own amens today. Amen. Amen, Pastor. Amen. Amen. So, so, so you got to have that drive. You got to have that drive because God is getting ready to send somebody to help you. Amen. Oh, I don't know who am I talking to today, but God is getting ready to send somebody to help you. God is getting ready to send somebody to mentor you. God is getting ready to send somebody that will encourage you. God is getting ready to send somebody to motivate you. God is getting ready to send somebody that needs to have the finances. You ain't going to have to fund this time. God is going to send somebody that's going to fund it for you. I wish I was talking to somebody up in here. God is getting ready to send you some help. Amen. Everybody God used that had faith. He sent somebody to help them. Amen. If you have courage to walk by faith, he will send somebody to help you. He never asked you if you had enough money. He asked you if you had faith. Come on, somebody. He, if I had a handful of seed, mustard seeds right now, I can throw them at you and you won't even know it hit you. Because the, the mustard seed faith, mustard seeds are so small that if I throw them at you individually, you won't even know it hit you. He said, if you just have that type of faith, he said, you can speak to the mountain and tell the mountain to be moved. Oh, my brother and my sister, I don't know what your mountain is, but if you got enough faith, uh, quit getting an attitude if you have enough faith. Uh, quit cussing people out if you had enough faith. Uh, quit believing people are believe. Stop believing in my people and have enough faith because sometimes God allows people to break your heart so you can stop believing in people that believe in God. And when God sends the right people, they will have a divine connection with you. And then, now God Abraham. It, it 
should have uh, we should take notes from Abraham because it wasn't that Abraham didn't sin it just Abraham kept on believing it wasn't that Abraham didn't have flaws we're not supposed to follow his flaws but we're supposed to follow his faith and if we follow his faith then understand God knows that you still believe in him that's the reason why God I, I love God because God said I, I, I don't look at your outward appearance I look at your heart and then when he sees that it's a heart that's chasing after him, when he sees a heart that's diligent seeking after him, you got to know that God is taking down everything that you are still believing him for. You might have, you might have sinned yesterday, but if you got up this morning and repented of your sins, the one that you knew that you were supposed to acknowledge, then God said, then I know that my baby still has my heart. Sometimes my children make me mad, but yet still, I, I can't hold on to that. My children, and tomorrow we will have. We will. You will still be my child. Why? Because you got my blood. And if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, guess what? You done had a blood transfusion. And God said, "I will never leave you nor forsake you." Come on, somebody. The enemy wants you to feel alone and isolated, but God said, "I will never leave you nor forsake you." You've been hard pressed on every side, but God said, "You, but you ain't been. You haven't been crushed. You've been persecuted." He said, "But you're not forsaken." And so. Life, you got hit, and there was something that was told in your life, 
And now you don't ever want to see that again. You don't want to ever see that person again. You don't want to ever see that hurt again. And all of a sudden, you, you, you're not the person who you used to be because you were blindsided. And when you get blindsided, you got to learn how to go to the church, the collision place, and get rebuilt again. Sometimes I had to take my car to get reprogrammed. Yeah. Because everything in the system wasn't riding like it used to. I'm talking about somebody you got to drive. Yeah. Point number one, when you drive, is that God is developing you. Yeah. Come on, I'm going to show you something right quick. Go with me to Mark chapter 10, verse 32. I'm going to give you these points and we're going to go home. Mark 10 and 46, I'm talking. Mark, this is my favorite passage. I love this passage. And for some of y'all, you won't see it because of this, this thing over here, but it's on the screen. This is my favorite passage right here. You ready? I'm reading out the NIV. It says, Then they came to Jer Jericho, and Jesus, his disciples, together with a large, large crowd, were leave, leaving the city. A blind man bought a male, which means son of males, was sitting by the roadside bed. When he heard that Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout. Somebody say shout. shout. Jesus, son of David, on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. I like blind brother bells, but he shouted all the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. Yes. Jesus stopped and said, call him. They called, so they called to the blind man, cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. Oh God, who am I talking to on today? Uh, verse 50 says, throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. Yeah. And then here it is. This is the kind of question that Jesus messed me up with. He said, what do you want me to do for you? Mm. Verse 51 said, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him, and the blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see Go said Jesus, your faith has healed you. What did he say? Your faith has healed you. He told him, he didn't tell him, your faith has healed you. He said, go, your faith has healed you. Immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Yeah. He didn't receive him sight, his sight and went down his own path. He, went, he received his sight and followed who? along the road. Somebody shout drive. drive. If, you, if you're going to have faith in action, you're going to have to learn how to drive. And your in drive D is you got you to gotta understand God is developing you. You got to be like blind water males that you got to get to a certain season of your life and you say, I will not settle to be a beggar the rest of my life. You get to the point where you say, I'm not going to be the one that have a bar
that you have a destination to get to. I want to ask you today, do you know where God is taking you? And if you're not praying, you've got to ask God, where do you want me to go in this season? And he's, na he's navigating you, he's developing you, because you've been leading by your own understanding too long. So why? Why he allowing you to be developed like he's allowing you right now? Why, why is he cutting you back? Why is he, why is he challenging you like he never challenged you before? God is challenging us in this season like he never challenged us before. And when you turn on the news, everything you see is nothing but bad news. There's nothing on the news that encourages you. Actually, it makes you matter that you already was. Now you're mad at that two double and pictures and a pit bull all tied up into one. You, you angry at everybody. You, you mad because things are not going your way. God is developing you. And so now you have to learn how through the word of God. When blind water man is heard that the word, he heard that the word was passing through. You know that Jesus is the word, right? He, when he heard the word was passing through, he made up in his mind, I will not miss my opportunity. And this is your opportunity. I need to, I need about three or four people to make up in your mind this year. This year, if you want to finish out strong, you're going to have some setbacks, but you want to finish out strong. You're going to have some headaches, but you want to finish back strong. You don't have all the answers, but you want to finish back. You're going to finish this year strong. We got three more months, and we got to finish out strong. The enemy thought you were going to be depressed. The enemy thought you were going to give in and quit. The enemy, the matter of fact, thought you were going to be dead. But God said, I need my children to finish strong. I need you to be happy on rainy days. I need you to be happy on good days and sunny days. Either way, you got to know how to obey. So you got to know how to obey. What that means, Pastor? That means you got to learn how to be happy even if you're not happy. You got to learn how to make yourself smile. Yeah. It's all right to be sad for a little while. We all have tough days. So you got to find the word of God while you're driving the eyes inspired. You got to learn how to be inspired by the word of God. When people don't understand your conversation, you got to learn how to be inspired. You have to learn how to be inspired. Somebody say drive. I don't miss Bill Drive. I miss the R. First of all, before you be inspired, you have to take responsibility for your for your for your success and your failures. Oh God. Because when you fail, that mean that don't mean you're falling backwards. Actually, you are failing forward. So what we do is we learn from our mistakes and continue to go forward. But the problem is most of us are driving like this. You can't go nowhere like this and you keep looking in the rearview mirror of your pain and God is trying to show you your purpose. You can't go nowhere. He's trying to show you purpose, man, but all we keep focusing on is our pain. Amen. And so God said, I need you to be responsible enough to study my word and get inspired. Somebody say inspired. inspired. Amen. So he's developing you. He's teaching you. You need to be more, more responsible. Why would God give you more money and you keep messing up the money that you have? Oh, I ain't talking about none of y'all. I'm just telling you how he's talking about me. He's telling me because for years I kept saying, Lord, I got all these kids. I got all these kids. And, and he said, I, I'm, I'm, I know. <laughs> I'm just telling you how he's I, I, I have to remind God all the time. I got nine kids. He said, I know. I gave them to you. Come on now. Come on. So when I start wanting, he starts sending people to help me. Oh, God. I ain't have to beg nobody to help. He sent help right at the right time. And so the thing is, when somebody help you, you got to go help somebody else. Yeah. Come on, somebody said, let's drive together. Yeah. Oh, God. So you got to you gotta learn how. You got to know that God is developing you. You got to know God is teaching you how to be responsible. And he's wanting, he's wanting you to be inspired. Yeah. He's, wa he's wanting you to be inspired. And while you are being inspired, he is developing your vision. And the Bible says without a vision, the people perish. If you don't have, if you don't set no goals to go by, you have nothing to stress toward. Right. If you don't have no goals, then you, 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 you only settle for where you are. But God is saying, you, if you make goals, and he said, no, watch, watch this, watch this. He's teaching you to stop, stop setting your own goal. Because God is not, does not have the answer. Nothing but he has willed in your life. He will not fund 
your will. He only funds his will. Somebody say drive. drive. Come on. Somebody shout drive. drive. So he's giving you vision. And the only way you're going to get it, you got to learn how to pray. Yeah. You got you to speak. How many of y'all, how many of y'all talk? Some of y'all got road rage and y'all can feel it all in the spirit. Some of y'all got road rage and you know them people can't hear you. But yet still, you talk to them. When you, you get out the way, do you say, I know you see me. And some of y'all, you talk to them through the and you give them. <laughs> Pour them. I'm talking to you, them. What, what, what y'all talking about? <laughs> and, and so you do all of that, and what did you get out of it? <laughs> you just And so, so blind boy lives. He followed Jesus. He done already been through road rage. He done been through all of this other stuff. But now he's needing to be healed. And God said, well, do, "What do you want me to do?" And some of you pray. You say, "God bless me. Bless you where?" Lord, I just need you to bless me today. Bless me if you see anything that's in me that shouldn't be. Take it out now. He's saying you will take responsibility and take it out. Oh God. Oh God. You, 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 hey, do you know what God needs to take out of you? If you don't know it, then he, why do you keep asking him to take it out when you don't know what it is? Oh, it is getting quiet up in here. I'm going back on this side. I'm going back on this side because I got one more letter to give and some of y'all might hit me. And so now, you got to learn how to be determined to let God uh, develop you. You got to be responsible. When you be responsible, you are intimate, intimate with God in the process. Somebody say process. You are in the process and we must continue to learn and apply God's word to our lives while we in the process. He never told you in the process you're going to feel good. He never told you in the process you're going to be happy. But he said if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, he will bring happiness back to you. He will bring the peace of God that passes all understanding that will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. But you got to be responsible to, to define what area you are in, where you need God to respond. You have the ability to talk to God. You have the ability to know when the opportunity comes. God will give you wisdom on how to seize the moment. This year, you got to finish out strong. Somebody plug up my clock back there so I won't run up my time. You got to finish out strong. So you got to take responsibility. And so now, ah, at the end of it, you got to learn how to encourage others. While you encourage yourself, you got to learn how to encourage others. That is the reason why blind body males, he, he was able to follow Jesus because he wanted to follow the one that encouraged him. So you got to learn how to encourage others. When God has delivered you, you got to learn how to encourage others. Oh,
him drive. Yes. Let him drive. And so many times we want to take the steering wheel, but let him drive. Let him drive. And while you let him drive, he will, on the way, he'll teach you to encourage somebody. Because there's somebody. Somebody needs to hear a word from you. If Naaman, little servant, would have talked to his wife, and this man moved on a, on a word from a slave. And I just ask you today, would you take a word from the man of God? I'm telling you, some of us, if, if, if we were to hear a word from the prophet like Naaman, and he said, dip seven times in the Jordan, the Jordan is like the Trinity. Will you have faith enough to do it? You, you got that. Faith in action is not just talking about it. It's about walking it out and doing what God said. Yeah. You, you, you want some miracle? God said, I'm not in the miracle working. I, I am in the miracle working business. But I will give you a miracle. But you don't need the miracle right now. I need you to take a step at a time. Yeah. I just want to know, will you take it? Will you take that step at a time? Who am I talking to today? Don't become distracted in life by missing your best season God has for you. Now is the time for you to obey. And today I need you to make a decision that you go obey God. No matter what. Turn the Bluetooth back on. I need you to obey God no matter what. And sometimes obeying God seems like it's foolish. But God said, if you just trust me, if you know it's God, I just need you to trust me. Yeah. Trust me and, and when you can't trace me. Yeah. I need you to trust me. Come on, somebody. I need you to trust me. So let's rehearse right quick. While you trust in God, you're going to let him drive. Yeah. So you're going to have the D, which means you're going to let God develop you. Yeah. While he's developing you, that means you don't do like Abraham and try to fix your promise yourself and have an Ishmael. Because sometimes he will leave your Ishmael for you to see the rest of your life where you made the wrong choice. You made the wrong decision. But just because you obey him and walk in by faith, he said, I bless Ishmael too, but he's not the promise. And some of us are like Elijah. You know, it's called that fire from heaven. And then you get to the place where you sit up under the juniper tree and say, Lord, just take my life. Because sometimes life can get hard. And you don't know what God is doing. And sometimes you feel like you're all alone. There's no other prophet but me. But God said, look around the corner. I got, I got a thousand, I got prophets all over the place waiting on you to get back in place. There is some young person that is waiting. There is some elderly person, young people, that's waiting on you to see that you have a hunger and thirst for God. That there's something. Matter of fact, before I end this message, I need you to, I need to ask you, who are you pouring into? Are you, oh, is this all this revelation just for you? Who are you pointing to that you can get more? And see, God doesn't pour back more if you ain't pouring nothing out. Because water that is moving becomes stale. You gotta constantly be moving, and that means you gotta let God drive. You gotta let God drive. And like I said in Sunday school, if God allowed you to still be here, He's still not through with you yet. Each and every one of us could have been in a life death situation, but God seen that you need to be here one more year. And you don't even know if you're going to be here next year, but within this three months, within this three months, what, what is God asking you to do? That's right. That's right. God want me to do something. What do he want? He asked blind Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do? And he's not going to answer until you start taking responsibility and say, Lord, have mercy on me. He blind Bartimaeus blind Bartimaeus would have never got healed if he had to open up his mouth and shout it. And there will always be distraction where people will come and tell you to be quiet. Child, God ain't gonna do that. Girl, you might well forget that. God ain't gonna God no, you don't listen to them. You keep yelling until you get your answer from God. When I count to three, I need you to call your name out in the atmosphere. When I count to three, I need you to call your name in the atmosphere. I need you to know that God is about to get somebody to call your name. God is about to give you favor with somebody. When I count to three, I need you to call out your name. One, two, three, one, bitch, up! Somebody's getting ready to call your name. God is going to bring somebody up in your remembrance. Listen, I got my last promotion, and I wasn't even signing no paper. I, they call my name. They call
name. There is nothing that God cannot do. He knows each and every one of us. And all you have to do is be in the right place. And when the opportunity comes, and when he asks you, what do you want me to do? When your name calls, what do you want him to do? When your name is called, what do you have in place? What vision do you have? If he call your name, somebody come and give you a million dollars right now. What are you going to do with child? I'm going to give me a house. Shoes you 
ain't war. For you ain't one of them. You ain't that will oppress you. You ain't war in five years. Yeah. Oh, Carriage. Because you know if you give it, God gonna give you some more. You need some more. Somebody shout drive. Yeah. If you can repeat what drive means, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we'll quit, I'm gonna let you go home. Yeah. You go get the chicken wings. We're gonna drive these stand for what? Development. I are responsibility. What? Responsibility. I inspire. I inspire. Okay. <laughs> Make me forget how to spell it. What? Uh, v. V. E. Encourage. Responsibility. Responsibility. I inspire. The vision. Take it off the screen. <laughs> Come on, Pat. D. R. Responsibility. I inspire. The vision. E. Give somebody to give God some praise up in here. unless you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Lord. If you don't know my Lord and Savior as your personal Savior, I want you to come right now. Lord. I want to touch and agree with you. I want you to know this God that I'm talking about that develops me, Lord. that develops you, that is that you can teach me Lord. how to be responsible. Listen, he taught me how to be responsible when I had all of them, when I have all the children and I see my friends and stuff was still partying, but I wanted to be a good father. I wanted to be a good father. So I could do what they done. And this is the one that I'm talking about that told me how to be a good father. So I need you to, if you don't know my personal Savior as your Savior, I need you to come right now, right now, 